y'all welcome and welcome back to my channel my name is taya and this is taya's turning pages <laughs> in my other videos the angles for these future videos might be a little bit weird a little bit off until I can figure it out because I did get a ring light so I'm trying to figure out how to like maneuver this and have this show my bookcase but also not too much back there because that's my kitchen there's just a whole thing going on so please bear with me as I figure it out but by the title of today's video you can tell that this is going to be 22 books I plan to read in 2022 so I do have my lovely book cart here guys I finally have a book cart and I'm so excited so many good books here already oh my gosh I can barely lift it up but you guys can't see it if I don't lift it up but yeah, this is what it looks like. I got it from Michaels. I will leave it linked down below just in case you're interested. But I do have quite a few books here, 22 to be exact. So we probably should get started. I am going to try to break this up by genre. I feel like that's the best way. Um, some I have more than others. Some there's only one or two. So I'm going to try to get those ones out the way and then focus on like the bigger sections. I'm not going to go into the synopsis for every single one probably. And if I do, it's probably going to be very, very short because I don't want this video to be too long. So please bear with me. I appreciate it. Thank you. So the first section that I'm going to start off with is a literary fiction. And I'm going to be looking at my phone as well just to make sure that I don't stumble over my words because happens all the time but the first book that I have here I actually picked this up from Target not too long ago and it is On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Wong so I've been wanting to read this book for so long because so many people on Bookstagram in particular booktube too and booktok but like I see so many people on Bookstagram praise this book and this from what I can gather from the synopsis and from the reviews is about a young Vietnamese man who writes this letter to his mother who cannot read and this letter pretty much just explores his reckoning with race identity culture as well as masculinity and it also talks about just him reckoning with his family's history so there's probably going to be themes of generational trauma and things like that in this book and I'm just really excited to read it I heard that this is really you know heartfelt it's very impactful and I heard that Ocean Vuong's writing is so poetic and so lyrical that I'm really excited to read this you guys know if you watch my videos that I love good prose good writing so I know that this one is going to be right at my alley. This book that I have here is a YA novel and it is Hurricane Summer by Asha Bromfield. I get this from Target as you can tell I got this over the summer and this cover is what drew me in it is so beautiful like stunning I just oh I love that cover art so much and Asha Bromfield I don't remember which show but she is an actress I just can't remember the show right now but she wrote her own book really happy for her love to see it but this book is actually about a young girl named oh I actually don't remember her name a young girl named Tilla who lives with her mother in the United States and Tilla and her mom are very close but something happens I think where Tilla gets in trouble and her mom decides to send her to Jamaica to go spend some time with her father that she never really knew because one I think she wanted Tilla to learn from her mistakes but also she wanted Tilla to have a relationship with her father so Tilla is very upset she does not want to go she does not want to really get to know her father because she's very upset that he never even reached out to her in the first place or really tried to build a relationship with her from the start. So Tilla's not happy about it but she obviously has to go anyway and while she gets to Jamaica she is very hesitant and very standoffish at first towards her father as well as the rest of her family I think on his side but as time goes on she starts to get more adjusted to him as well as the island as well as the people and the customs and the traditions and she starts to really like it I'm assuming but as she starts to get more acclimated to her new environment a, a really bad tropical storm hits Jamaica and now Tilla and her family have to figure out how they're going to survive. So I heard that this book is really, really sad. It pulls on your heartstrings and it's also a coming of age story. It talks about just how, you know, black girlhood and black fatherhood is explored because there are different things that go into that. So I'm just really excited to read this one. I've heard nothing but great things about it. I haven't heard too many things, but the things that I have heard, I heard it is really, really good. It's just really sad. So I know I'm gonna have to be in the right headspace to read this one, but I'm really hoping that I can get to it, of course, in the summer. We're gonna move on to women's literary fiction slash just like literary fiction in general. But the first book that I have here is Kim Ji Young, Born 1982 by Cho Nam Ju. And I actually bought this book when I picked up Convenient Store Woman by Sayaka Murata, and I love that. I gave that a four out of five stars. I love the social commentary in there. And it was such a quirky, odd little story, but it worked really well. It was Women's in Translation Month. So I wanted to pick up some translated reads from Japan, from Korea, etc. And so I also picked up this one. And from what I can gather from the synopsis, this is is about a young woman who goes through a lot of mental health issues and mental psychosis issues and I, I'm so sorry if you guys hear noise in the background my heat is turning on and I can't
can't do anything about that but she starts to go undergo a lot of mental psychosis issues and she starts to tell her husband her family and anybody that will listen that she's going through these you know mental health struggles and of course because she's a woman she's being gaslighted people are telling her she's being dramatic etc etc and this pretty much just follows her journey of her descending into madness and no one believing her similar to convenience store woman there's a lot of social commentary in here about how women are not believed when they're going through health issues and health scares and i think that this also takes a step further because i think this takes place in korea so this also has those elements as well because things of course are done differently in korea than they are in the u.s so i can't wait to see how um Cho Namju explores all of that in here and what else is mentioned in this book. The next book that I have here is Queenie by Candace Carty Williams and this cover art is stunning like look at that I love the details of the braids I did find this at my local thrift store not goodwill I found this at my other local thrift store for only a dollar and I'm so happy about it because this is fairly new and it's in pretty good condition but from what I can gather this book is about a young woman named Queenie and I'm like looking at my phone and like the book because I need to make sure I get the synopsis right but this is about a um, young woman named Queenie who is vibrant she's very troubled but she's also 25 and she's a British Jamaican woman who is just not having a good year she's just not having a good time she's not having a good year she's trying to navigate adulthood and she's just trying to come into her own so i don't want to say that this is a full coming of age story because queenie is like in her mid-20s but i think that this is just again gonna have really great social commentary especially because queenie is black and she's also living in the uk so you're gonna get that experience as well and i just can't wait to read it and see how the author tackles you know a young woman spiraling and if queen can get herself out of that Okay, and the last women's lit fiction book that I have here is The Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Rafi. And I actually saw this book recommended by GK Rees. I am obsessed with her and her channel. I just love the books that she talks about because they're just so fascinating, so thought provoking. And I just found a lot of great like women's lit and you know nonfiction gems from her channel. So I will leave her link down below, one of my favorite booktubers. But she talked about this in one of her reading vlogs. And from what I can gather, again, I'm looking at my notes here. It says that this is about a young mermaid a young mermaid named acacia who lives on this island called black conch and she crosses paths with this fisherman and her and this fisherman like get into the situation where they get to know each other and i think the fisherman ends up falling in love with um acacia but this isn't like really like romance like this book has social commentary in it so it does talk about how even as a mermaid women are objectified and sexualized by men and it just talks a lot about you know vanity and just all of these other type of topics i'm not really sure exactly the full extent but that's what i gathered from watching gk reads videos as well as just reading a little blurb of the synopsis either way really excited to read this one this cover art again is absolutely stunning and this was the casa book uh book of the year in 2020 so a lot of people really like this book and I hope I'm one of them. Okay, so moving on to the next section which is historical fiction that's how I'm classifying these as so the first book that I have here is none other than the song of Achilles I'm not going to give a full synopsis because this needs no introduction everyone pretty much knows about this book this did come out years ago like I think 10 plus years ago but it has been getting a lot of um, hype on book talk in particular so that's why it's like making its, its rounds again and this I know is a Greek mythology retelling and I think it talks about what's his name Patroclus I never read Homer or the Iliad or the Odyssey or any of those type of books back in high school or college I know I know yikes but I never read them so I don't really know all of the Greek mythology characters except for the main ones like Zeus and you know Medusa and all of them but I did read Antigone I like that book I read that in high school but this one like I said is a Greek mythology retelling and there's a lot to deal with you know war and romance and heartbreak and just so many important topics I heard are woven throughout this book so I really can't wait to read this one. I heard that this is gory a bit because again there is a war going on because it was back in that time period so I'm hoping I can just bypass those scenes but I'm really excited to read this one. I have heard that this will like emotionally break you. Everyone says that this book has made them cry so I'm gonna have to be in the right headspace to read this but this is a priority because I read a sample of this on my iPad and I loved it. So I want to pick this up soon but I feel like this is not going to be read until March because I already have like plans of what I want to read in February so this is probably going to be a March read. I need some tea already guys. I've been filming like since this morning so I just I need some tea. Okay moving on to the next book we have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Another book that does not need any introduction because everyone and their mother knows about this but it's a story about an old Hollywood starlet named Evelyn Hugo who agrees to get interviewed by this woman slash journalist. I forget her name but they end up sitting down for an interview and Evelyn pretty much just takes her through her career as a Hollywood actress as well as just her relationships and you know 
know her personal life when it comes to her seven husbands. So I heard that there's a crazy plot twist in here, not like anything like scary, but I just heard that there's something in here that you might not be expecting. And I'm really excited. I'm really excited. I don't really have anything else to say. I do plan on filming a reading vlog with this, and I guess I'll introduce the next book here. I do plan on filming a reading vlog with this book and this book, which is Malibu Rising, because I want to do a TJR reading vlog, and I just feel like these are the two books that I want to read. So yes, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And now moving on to Malibu Rising. You're probably wondering why why there's no dust jacket on it. Well, I got this from Thrift Books, and I thought I was getting a good deal on it because it was only $11, and they didn't say anywhere that there was no dust jacket. So this is where we're at right now guys i don't understand but either way malibu rising this i know is about a family i think they're called the rivas like that's their last name rivas and this follows them and pretty much how they got to where they got to because i think they're very rich their father i think is also like a musician or he's just very famous and this book actually like the characters in this book do make appearances i think in the seven husbands of evelyn hugo as well as the daisy jones and the six which i have not read and i don't plan on reading that one i'll get into that later but yeah i don't really know too much else about this i know that there's like a crazy plot twist but either way again excited i love a good family drama i especially love a good family rich drama book i love it gossip girl is one of my favorite shows of all time so i know i'm probably going to eat this book up with the quickness but yeah i went from a reading vlog with that with this one and seven husbands i don't plan on reading daisy jones and the six just because i feel like that book will not interest me um i love music and i love that whole aspect but i don't know i just i just don't really feel inclined to pick up that book so maybe after i read those two i'll pick up daisy jones and the six but for now i'm just gonna stick with those two okay so moving on to thrillers which i have quite a few of the first book that i have here is the heights by louise candlish I hope I'm pronouncing that right. This is a arc that I received from Atria Books. So thank you so much to Atria Books for sending this my way. I'm really excited to read this one. This doesn't come out until March 1st, 2022. I'm gonna read the synopsis because again, this is a new book, but right here on the back it says, he thinks he's safe up there, but he'll never be safe from you. The Heights is a tall, slender apartment building among the warehouses of Tower Bridge. Its roof terrace so discreet, you wouldn't know it existed if you weren't standing at the window of the flat directly opposite, but you are. And that's when you see a man up there, a man you'd recognize anywhere. He's older now, and his appearance has subtly changed. But it's definitely him. Which makes no sense at all, since you know he's been dead for over two years. You know this for a fact, because you're the one who killed him. Why does this sound so good? Guys, when I saw this on NetGalley, I like requested it with a quickness, and Atria was so kind and sent me the physical copy of it, and I cannot wait to read this one. This just sounds so good. It sounds so freaking good. Ruth Ware quoted it, which is, you know, really cool. I still have not read anything really by Ruth Ware, but like I know she's a really prominent thriller author, so that's cool. But this book is a little long, I'm not gonna lie. It's about like four, it's not that long. It's like 402 pages, which is really not that long, but like kind of long. Either way, really excited to read this one. I don't know when I'm gonna get to it. I will get to it before March 1st though, so I can post my review and my thoughts, but really excited. These books are all gonna fall, I'm telling y'all right now. This book that I have here is State of Terror by uh, Hillary Clinton and Louise Penny. So I talked about this briefly in my last book haul video. And this one, I don't wanna get into the full synopsis because it is a very complex like thriller because it is a political thriller. But I do know that this is about a young woman named Ellen Adams who is the Secretary of State. And she really loves her job, she's pretty passionate about it. Unfortunately, there are planned attacks that are happening on the US as time goes on. And Ellen is trying to get to the bottom of it and she starts to wonder if there's a bigger conspiracy theory at large here if the people that she's actually working with are involved in this plot to harm the u.s etc etc so i heard that this is really good there's a lot of social commentary in here because hillary clinton did help write this so i'm really excited to read this one this is this is an anticipated read for me last year so i'm definitely carrying it over into this year but this is a chonker so we'll see when i get to it but really excited all right, we're good. The next book that I have here is The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman, and I have not read this. I've had this for so long. I got this from the thrift store for $2, and I just haven't read this. I probably should move closer, huh? I have not read this, and I don't know why. I keep putting it off, and I have no idea why, because everyone that I have spoken to or that I have seen, you know, post about this, has raved about this book. And from what I can gather from the synopsis, this is about a group of elderly people who live in this retirement home and they love to talk about all things true crime and murder. And they meet on Thursdays in this nursing home or retirement home and they just talk about, you know, crime. And one day there's a real murder that takes place. So they decide to band together and try to solve it. And I just think that sounds so funny, sounds so interesting. And again, I've heard nothing but great things about this. So I do plan on getting to this very soon because I know Richard 
Mr. Osmond released the sequel to this book. I don't know what that's called, but I need to read this before I can grab that one. So yes, hopefully I get to it soon. So the next book that I have here is Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. So I did get this during Barnes and Noble's buy one get one 50% off sale back in the fall. So I've had this for quite some time, but this will be the second Riley Sager book that I read. I read Survive the Night last year and one of my favorite books, I'm a Survivor Night apologist, I don't care. But this book is about a young girl named Jules who is very broke and I think she recently got out of this relationship. So she decides to apply to this job in the newspaper. I think it's like a classified ad and it's to be an apartment sitter for this place called the Bartholomew. So Jules applies, she gets the job, but there are rules. And I think the rules are she can't have any overnight guests or visitors. She can't like actually leave the apartment, I don't think, while she's actually like on the clock or like, you know, going through a shift. And she can't talk to or fraternize with any of the neighbors in this apartment complex because these neighbors are either rich, famous, or they're both. So despite all of those rules, Jules does find a friend in this apartment complex and she's an, I think she's also an apartment sitter. And Jules also has this weird like feeling where when she looks at this apartment sitter, she feels like this apartment sitter reminds her of her sister who went missing I think years ago. But that is like a whole other I think plot point. But this apartment sitter starts to tell Jules about like the history of the Bartholomew um, place and she talks to her about how she thinks it's haunted, spooky things have been happening and have happened in the past and Jules kind of brushes this off until this apartment sitter goes missing and now Jules has to figure out this is related to anything paranormal that the apartment sitter was telling her about. So I just think that this sounds really interesting. I've heard mixed reviews on this book. I feel like a lot of Riley Sager's books have mixed reviews. You either like them or you don't. So I'm really excited to see if this is going to be one that also goes in that Survive the Night pile but either way really excited. I need to read this as well as his other books before his new one comes out this year. So I'm going to prioritize this one like Truly, I'm gonna prioritize this one. The next book that I have here is The Hunting Party by Lucy Fole. The synopsis says, a New Year's reunion in the remote Scottish wilderness. The beautiful one, the golden couple, the volatile one, the new parents, the quiet one, the city boy, the outsiders. The outsider. One of these friends is a murderer and one won't make it out alive. Sounds really good. Isolated trope, snowy setting. Love that for me. All right, the next book that I have here is Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. So I didn't realize this was a thriller when I picked this up. I just love the cover and it sucked me in. So I bought it and I always wanted to read something by Tiffany D. Jackson. And I didn't really know what genre she was like writing. Honestly, I thought it was just like YA like contemporary but clearly it's thriller and horror because she also came out with white smoke but this one is about a young girl named enchanted who is an aspiring songstress so she wants to become a singer and she meets this guy named Corey who is like in the music industry and he is living the high life he is living a very fast paced life really like awful and upsetting situation because i think Corey is a lot older than enchanted and he starts to prey on her and starts to groom her and it like has all of those themes and then also something really bad happens to Corey one day and Enchanted gets caught up in it and the story pretty much takes off from there. So like I said, it is a thriller. You have to figure out if Enchanted really, you know, played a part in whatever happened to Corey. And also this is going to tackle really important issues such as, you know, the objectification and sexualization of black girls and just how a lot of the times black girls who are abused or who are groomed aren't believed or aren't taken seriously when these things are being brought to the light. So yeah, I just know that this is going to be a really heavy read. I've heard nothing but great things, but I just know that this is going to be very, very heavy and I'm gonna to have to devote a lot of attention to it and like annotate this. So I'm not sure when I'm gonna to get to it, but I definitely want to read it and plan to read it before 2022 is over. The last thriller slash horror, this is really horror, I guess. So the last and only horror book that I have here is Horror Story by Grady Hendrix. <clears throat> See, I need my tea again, guys. So this is the book that was in my end of the year TBR video. I did not get to this before December was over. Surprise, surprise. But this is about a group of um, employees that work at this Ikea-esque type of store. As you can tell from the cover here, it is giving off that Ikea catalog vibes. I love the back of this. This is so cool. But this is about a group of employees who notice that the store is going through weird and spooky like things. So the store will be fine when they all close up for the night but when they come back they start to notice products are broken or misplaced and like the cameras are, are messed up and all of this type of stuff so all of these employees decide to stay at the store overnight to try to figure out what is actually going on if there's something paranormal happening or if there's somebody breaking into the store and doing all of this type of stuff and i hear that the story derails after that so i heard that this gets really scary really dark and i'm just really excited to read it i love how this is formatted grady hendrix did such a good job at making this as if it was an actual ikea catalog like look at that you have the showroom here i'm just obsessed you have the graphic design layout that ikea is known for i just think that is so cool i love when authors and uh illustrators really put the time and the effort into making these books like this because oh but grady hendrix always has i feel like great covers and 
just really cool illustrations to be honest like you can tell he like really like puts a lot of thought into who he chooses for his books and i just really like that so i'm gonna get to this hopefully soon i don't think i'm gonna wait until halloween to read it because i read horror and thriller whenever i want to but yeah want to get to this soon okay so moving on to the last section which is romance the book that i have here is sweet hand by ng peltier and this is actually a part of the uh, series which is called island bites so this is book one i love this cover they are gorgeous like look at that cover art they are so cute so i have to read my little notes right here guys because the synopsis is kind of i don't know the synopsis with this one i feel like is a little bit jumbled but what i gathered from this is that this is about a woman named Sharice who is a pastry chef and she goes through this messy and public breakup because I think her boyfriend at the time was a musician. So her face and his face, they're splashed all over the tabloids and the press is eating it up. And so she wants to get away from all of that and her sister is actually planning to get married and Sharice is, is named the maid of honor. So now Sharice can throw herself into, you know, helping her sister plan this wedding and take her mind off of this breakup. And while she goes, you know, through all of this and when it's time for the actual wedding itself, um, she notices that her like arch nemesis, I don't know if like he's actually her arch nemesis, but this guy that really gets on her nerves um, is named Kiran, which is this man right here. They end up crossing paths and Sharice is really annoyed because again, he annoys her and I think she also annoys Kiran. But the catch is, while Sharice is her sister's maid of honor, Kieran is the groom's best man. So of course these two get thrown into situations where they get closer and closer to one another. There's that forced proximity trope, enemies to lovers, and the story pretty much takes off from there. I'm really excited to read this one. I got this so long ago, but I haven't gotten around to it, but I'm definitely going to make time for it this year. And again, that cover art, I just love it. The illustration is just so cute and I love baking. I love when baking or anything like that is incorporated into a romance. So I know I'm going to probably eat this book up. So the next book that I have here is The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. I know, I know this book has already made its rounds on social media. Everyone has already read it, but I have not yet. I literally just ordered this not too long ago because I was putting it off and putting it off and finally decided that I needed to pick this up because one of my other favorite booktubers, Books with Chloe, obsessed with her and her content, she loves this book. She's always going on about The Spanish Love Deception. So I just figured I had to pick it up because yeah, why not? So right here it says, a wedding, a trip to Spain, the most infuriating man, and three days of pretending. In other words, a plan that will never work. So I'm not gonna go into the full synopsis because again, everyone pretty much knows about the Spanish love deception, but I guess this is a enemies to lovers. And I love that this takes place in Spain because I've always wanted to go to Spain. And I just think that this is going to give me all of the feels that I need before I actually can book that trip. <laughs> so yes, I also heard that Aaron Blackford is like everyone's favorite book boyfriend. So I wanna see what he's giving and see if I agree with the girls, we'll see. Next book that I have here is From Luke Off With Love by Mariana Zapata and on the back here it says if someone were to ask Jasmine Santos to describe the last few years of her life with a single word it would definitely be a four letter one. After 17 years and countless broken bones and broken promises she knows her window to compete in figure skating is coming to a close but when the offer of a lifetime comes comes in from an arrogant idiot she spent the last decade dreaming about pushing in the way of a moving bus Jasmine might have to reconsider everything including Ivan Lukov. This sounds really cute it's a slow burn romance just like the Spanish love deception I do plan on filming a reading vlog where I read both of these so stay tuned but I'm really excited to read this. I never read anything from Mariana Zapata before but I know that a lot of people love her books especially The Wall of Winnipeg. Now I don't think I'm gonna be reading that one because that's like 600 pages and I don't got time for that. I really don't y'all. I think that is a little bit too long for a romance but who knows we'll see. I'm trying to see if I can really get into slow burn romances because I read one last year The Roughest Draft that actually comes out this month but I read it last year because I was approved for it on NetGalley and I really enjoyed it and I really love the whole like 10 and them like will they won't they and the whole like them waiting it out situation I thought it was actually kind of fun so who knows this could be something that I like so I really want to give it a try and I feel like Mariana's, Mariana Zapata is the queen of slow burn romances so I feel like I need to like read from the best you know so the next book that I have here is Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. Yes, another book that I have slept on because so many people, again, are raving about this. I have not seen a single negative review on this, ever, ever. That says a lot, honestly. And Tia Williams herself, she's always getting a lot of praise. She's coming out with another book this year and everyone's like, anticipating it so I need to get on this before that one comes out but all I know about this one is that this is about two writers so 
one of them is named Eva and the other one is named Shane and I think they used to be friends or they used to be involved back in the day like they used to date but something happened where they both fell out and Eva moved on with her life Shane moved on with his and now Eva I think is a single mother and so she's going through the motions of that as well as just dealing with you know what it is like being a writer and Shane is also going through the motions of life himself but I think they actually meet up again at this writers convention and they weren't expecting to see each other I don't think but they do and I think they start to reconnect and rekindle whatever it was that they lost all those years ago and you pretty much just follow them on that journey of them having that second chance romance as well as just unpacking trauma and figuring out why they didn't work out the first time around so really excited to read this one again love the cover it's stunning the book that i have here is ugly love by colleen hoover yes we have a coho book in here guys this is the only colleen hoover book that i own and the only one that is interesting me at the moment, even though I've heard not the best things about this book, out of all her other ones, I feel like this one is like one of the most polarizing ones, but we gonna see. So this one is about two people named Miles and Tate, and I don't really know the ins and outs of like the whole plot or synopsis, but from what I can gather, they both agree that they're attracted to each other, but they both agree to, I think, like a friends with benefits type of situation. And of course, strings start to get attached the benefits and the friends start to get blurred and i think the story pretty much takes off from there so you start to see these two and their journey on love and how ugly it can get how messy it can get and how i think even toxic it can get so i don't know how this one's gonna go but i love mess i love i love toxicity in my like relationship books only in my relationship books because i feel like it adds more spice to the story it makes it more fun and entertaining to read i don't know so sometimes you need these books so i'm really excited to read this one this is going to be my first colleen hoover read so this is definitely going to set the precedent for i feel like her writing and if i like her books um and who knows after i read this maybe i'll pick up it ends with us and verity and all the other ones but for right now ugly love was the only one that spoke to me okay second to last book we have shipped by angie hoffman so i've had this book for a while now like all of these books i've had these books for a while now and this one i actually got from i think book outlet and i always wanted to read i wanted to read this so badly when i first got it and then i flopped but this one right here is about a marketing manager named Henley as well as a social media manager named oh my gosh I think his name is Gray Gray May it's G-R-A-E-M-E -E. I don't know how to pronounce that guys but Grammy Grammy I don't know but either way it's about these two and they're both up for the same promotion and Henley really cannot stand G we're just gonna call him G Hen Henley cannot stand him but I don't think G even really thinks about her that much like I don't even think he's phased by her but either way they're both up for the same promotion and boss tells them that they have to both go on this trip together to like some island tropical resort destination and they have to um write and present i think a pitch and whoever has the best pitch wins and gets the promotion which is like okay like i get it but i'm also like ooh, okay so yeah this is definitely going to be like a rival slash enemies to lovers type of situation this is compared to the hating game or like sally thorne's works as well as christina lauren i never read anything by christina lauren or sally thorne i have not read the hating game but i'm getting to it but yeah um I don't know i just thought that this sounded interesting when i first picked this up so i said why not the last romance book that i have here is the view is exhausting by michaela clements and ojuli dada i'm really excited to read this one i've had this again for a while but this is a fake love story about two actors or an actor and an actress and i think they're like fake dating they're putting on a show for the cameras and of course behind the scenes the lines start to get blurred and i think they actually start falling for each other so can't wait to read this i heard that this is also messy so we love that I also love this cover art. Again, it's giving the hills, it's giving the OC, that mid 2000s teen drama show, and I love it. So, yeah. All right, y'all, and those are 22 books that I hope to read before 2022 is over. Again, these are all from my physical TBR, so these are all books from my actual bookshelves, which is why it looks a little bit bare and a little bit janky right now because I had to pull them off. But yes, all of these are from there, and I need to read them. I really want to make a dent in my physical TBR and actually feel accomplished when I look at my bookshelf because I've only read a few of these, and the rest of the books I just either keep buying new or I'm uh, renting them from the library or I'm reading them from NetGalley, my iPad, etc. So I'm trying to get a handle on things and I really need to make a dent. So here's to hoping, right? Here's to hoping. Anyways, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me and my channel out and I would really appreciate it. And also please be sure to follow me on my bookstagram as well as my story graph. I will leave all of that information linked down below as well as at the end of the video as I always do. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one.